Hey guys, welcome to the HD channel and in this video I'll be checking out the Oppo Reno 4 Z 5G. Okay guys, so we've got another phone here from Oppo. This is the Reno Z and it's 5G and it's another mid-range phone here so it's not going to break the bank but it's got quite a pr pretty impressive spec. There's no Snapdragon here or a MediaTek processor but we do have 120 hertz refresh rate and we've got a 4000 milliamp battery as well with 18 watts fast charge. So is it good? Let's check it out. Okay guys, so this is the box the Reno 4Z comes in and you can see it's a pretty cool looking box and it's got like a dot design that makes up the words Reno on the back there as you can see, it looks pretty cool and on the side again, Apple Reno 4Z 5G and it comes with Android 10 out of the box so we just take the sleeve off and then we've got the white box inside there very really minimalistic look a white design with like a silver finish on it so it looks really sleek so inside you've got your case and your paperwork as well so it was uh, always nice to get a case in the box and your pin jet tool as well and that's the bad boy there the Oppo Reno 4Z and in your box you also got your USB-C cable your power brick and also what's quite rare these days as well is uh, you got some wired earphones in the box as well Okay guys, so this is the Oppo Reno 4Z. I can see it's a it's a cool looking phone and it comes in two colors. It comes in an ink black and this one, the dew white. And it's like a, a pearlescent white. As you can see, it's a nice looking phone. It comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, which is great. But unfortunately, you cannot expand the storage either. So that's a bit of a downer. But on, on the plus side, you also got 4,000 milliamp of battery as well. And you got 18 watt fast charging as well. So on the front here, you've got Grid Glass 3 Plus. No AMOLED here, unfortunately, but we do have an LCD screen at 6.57 inches, and it's running at 120 hertz as well. So you've got a super silky smooth screen. Uh, the screen looks great. I've got no complaints of it. As you can see here, the colors are really vivid and the dark's really black as well. So no complaints there. It also comes with a pre-applied screen protector already and it has a pill shaped camera cutout housing a 16 megapixel camera and a 2 megapixel depth sensor as well. So on the back there's no glass, it's all plastic here so because of that unfortunately you haven't got a premium feeling phone because of that but I mean if you use it with a case anyway to be honest you won't be able to tell the difference so that's not a deal breaker. The camera module has a sleek looking square design housing a 48 megapixel main shooter an 8 megapixel ultra wide and you've got two 2 megapixel depth sensors as well and also with LED flash in the middle as well. The Reno 4Z comes out of the box with color OS 7.2 and that's on top of Android 10 out of the box. So we have a MediaTek processor on here, so unfortunately no Snapdragon in there, but everything is really quick and responsive anyway. And even though demanding games like Call of Duty plays and looks great, you can play with the frame rate on high. The resolution only has a maximum resolution medium, so that was a little bit disappointing to be honest. So on the bottom of the phone there, you've got your headphone jack, your USB-C port and your downward firing speaker. And on the side there, you've got your power button stroke fingerprint scanner as well. On the top of the phone there, you've got your noise cancelling microphone. On the left of the phone, you've got your volume rocker and your SIM tray. And the SIM tray does take two SIMs, but unfortunately you can't expand your storage through it. Okay, so that's your Oppo Reno 4Z 5G. And I've also taken some sample pictures and videos as well. So check them out. Alright guys, so this is the uh, selfie video camera test on the Oppo 4 Reno Z 5G and on the front of the camera it looks like there's a dual camera but even though it's got a, uh, a pill shaped cutout there's actually only one camera on here so there's a 16 megapixel camera and there's also a depth sensor as well so there's no wide camera lens on here but the framing on this is pretty good you can see, you can, you can see a lot throughout the frame and uh, it's got a quite rich, good range on there but this is so you get a rough idea of what the video mode is like on the selfie cam so let me know guys what you think of the quality and also the sound as well okay guys so this is the video mode on the 48 megapixel main shooter 
and uh, it's not the most ideal look uh, conditions today you can see it's quite a lot of grey skies today no sun but uh, let's uh, just see how we get on with this today, today then so I mean like uh, got a sign here in front of me it's not that far away from me but when I try to zoom in let's have a look to five times you can see already there's a lot of green there already and that sign is not even that far away from me if I try to zoom in a bit more to ten times I think what's those from this camera there is a lot of artificial sharpening and from there ten times already you can see there's a lot of uh, lots of detail already but it looks like something's going on there it's like flickering a bit so I'm guessing uh, there's a lot of uh, digital uh, processing for the sharp artificial sharpening and it just not coping I'm gonna zoom back out again then it goes back to its full resolution so let's see that's something a bit further so maybe uh, uh, let's go up we've got the home bagging sign there so if I try to zoom in there I'm gonna try to zoom it five times it doesn't look too bad as the sign before but even then you can still see a lot of green and it looks quite artificial as well some of the detail around as well and if I try to zoom in more at ten times and uh, you can see just mush, there's no detail there at all you can see there is a lot of it's trying to actually be sharp in it but you can see it is a uh, it's struggling quite a bit actually I mean it's not something that we use in your everyday day-to-day -day life but at least we know you know it's there if you want to use it and when we zoom back out again it's back to full resolution again and a lot of these cameras are like that. I mean, usually when you, when you do the zoom, the digital zoom, they're not the best zooms, but uh, at least sometimes we've got a rough idea of like how good the camera is as well uh, when it's put into conditions that uh, kind of push the camera a bit more. So it, it does have a, a wide lens on here as well. Like most mid range phones, you can't change the lens while recording. So let me just stop it here and then change it to the uh, wide range. Okay, so again, so this is the wide lens camera and you can see the field of view is much more wider it's much more in the in the frame it's not the full 48 megapixels like the main shooter but again that's uh, pretty not very normal on these mid-rangers uh, the wide lens uh, lens is never as good as the main shooter but it's a trade-off for getting a, a wider angle so that's just a rough idea of the wide lens so you got a rough idea what that's like Okay guys, so that's the Reno 4Z 5G and again, I've been really impressed with a lot of these mid-range phones at the moment and this was no exception either and it's been a really nice using it as well, it's a really nice phone. I think overall I think it's a really nice phone, nice looking phone visually. It is a really light phone as well, it is a, there is only a 4000mAh battery in here. Uh, I'm quite a heavy power user so I do use my phone all day. and. Usually by the end of the day, I'm left with about 15% battery on it. 
uh, there is an 18 watt fast charge on this so it tops up and charges pretty quick on this but for me I think I'm quite used to like uh, phones with a bigger battery but it's not a, not a deal breaking thing 4000 milliamp battery but because of that the phone is quite light as well because when I first unboxed this one of the first things when I started using this the thing that struck me with this phone was the weight of it it's quite light uh, it's about 100 feet, uh, sorry it's, the, it's about 184 grams so it's quite light so it's quite easy to hold in the hand it feels nice in the hand as well what I do like about Oppo phones as well is the placement of the volume button and also the uh, on off button and the fingerprint scanner because I do like to tend to like press the volume with my phone and then use the fingerprint scanner here on the side here uh, it also got a face lock as well which is super fast as well which works like a dream so yeah overall it's a great looking phone it's a great looking phone I'm happy with the performance but uh, as usual there are some things that uh, you are missing out on if you're coming up from a flagship phone so again no wireless charging on here not a big deal we've got 18 watt fast charging here and for the price you're paying that's just a lot of price to pay so it's not too bad the processor on this is not a snapdragon it's a mediatek but overall it's it runs pretty good. I mean, my experience with using this phone, uh, it has been really smooth, it has been really quick, and it has been really snappy as well. What I've noticed is if I leave a lot of apps open, which is a bad habit of mine, then I think the processor does suffer a bit and it does a lot of the apps do stop responding. So you just simply open the menu and then close the apps you're not using no more, and that should resolve the issue. But over on that, I've not had much issues with this. Usually I do like to use a uh, Nova launcher on my phones and again this is not exception either I put Nova launcher on here it was ex as expected but I did notice like uh, this this is quite a running thing that happens on a lot of Oppo phones when I try putting a, a launcher on it then everything does work as expected but the split screen function does not work with the launchers on these phones so if you want to use the launcher then it's going to work fine as expected but if you're using launcher and you want to use the split screen function then it won't work and if you do want to use a split screen function then you need to remove the launcher and use a default uh, launcher on, the, on these phones so that's just something that you need to take note of the cameras on these are okay I mean the, the pictures if you can see from the samples a lot of the pictures do look great uh, but if the conditions aren't great and if you do zoom in or you or you pixel peep then you will notice that a lot of the pictures when you do zoom in there isn't a lot of detail in a lot of the pictures sometimes and if it, if it is quite dim sometimes the pictures aren't you know, that great either but overall I think the camera it, it, it does the job I mean it's not going to win awards for the for the best pictures and the best camera out there but I think overall I think it's a it's a decent enough for you to use a lot of mid-range phones at the moment are offering dual speakers on the phone as well so unfortunately the Oppo Reno 4Z 5G does not have dual speakers either so it's only got a single firing speaker on the bottom there Again, not a big issue, but just something to say not of like a lot of these mid-range phones at the moment, they're stepping up to the game and they're offering a lot more. And on this one, I do have 128 gigabytes of memory on this one as well, so which is lots of memory there. But another thing for me that's missing again on this phone is the expandable memory as well. So again, there's not expandable memory on here either. You can put two SIM cards in at the same time, but you can't expand the memory as well. So for me, I think it's a great phone. I think it's a great looking phone. I think it's uh, it works pretty well. I mean, it's got a substandard camera. Uh, if you do zoom in and you do pixel peep, you will find that there's some loss of detail in a lot of the pictures. There's no dual speakers on here. There's no expandable memory. There's no uh, dual camera on the, on the selfie camera. I think overall, I think for me, I think it's a phone that it's great value for money but I do feel like there are some things on there which is just average and there's some things that are, they could have added in here which is missing on this phone especially in today's market on these mid-range phones because on the mid-range phones I want yes there is an 18 watt fast charge in here yes there is a 4000 milliamp battery in here yes there is a 120 hertz refresh rate screen in here which is great but I would have liked to see for example a dual uh, selfie cam on here. I would like to see expandable memory in here. I would like to see uh, dual speakers on here. But for about two hundred fifty pounds, two hundred sixty pounds, it's not. To be honest, it's not a bad value. To be honest, but I think I'm just being spoiled by a lot of phone mid-range phones at the moment, which have they have given they have gone that little bit extra uh, to give you, and this is uh, missing some things from uh, from that. 
But other than that, I think it's a it's an okay phone. Uh, I would recommend it if you, if you want to pay about 250, 260 pounds. It works as expected. I mean, it's not a phone which I would like totally um, not recommend. I think it's an okay phone overall. Uh, I want to say great, but I would say yeah, it's an okay phone. Uh, I think it'd be is a phone that if you don't like using heavy phones and you like to, to feel to use a phone which if it feels good in the hand, it's a uh, it's comfortable to hold, it's not too heavy, then I think this could be a phone for you. So guys, have you guys used the Oppo Reno 4 Z5 G before? If you have, let me know about your experiences down below. And uh, if you guys like this video guys, click on the like button for me. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet guys, click on my subscribe button. As always guys, see you guys soon and ciao for now.